So, a lot of people ask me how I came back to the faith, how I found Jesus. So, first, you got to find God. So, let me give you my thoughts on spirituality. So, I'm sitting on a plane. Sitting on a plane, going from Dubai to D.C. Going over the Atlantic. It's all water. Because you look, check that little map thing on the plane, it'd be all water. So, I don't necessarily sleep good on planes. So, I had like a routine. I would uh, stay up, watch the movies until the lady came by with the trade. The lady came by exactly after, I believe, two hours when you're on an international flight. So, cool. I know I got some food coming real quick. So, I watch a movie. And then after I eat, I take my little melatonin and I go to sleep. So I sleep by six, seven hours because it's a, what, 13, I believe 13, 15 hour flight, some shit like that. So we on this plane and we on the plane and uh, then something happened. Man, that plane started to shake real hard. I'm talking about real hard. Um, it was this dude on the side of me and he was knocked out, like almost snoring. Man, that plane was rocking so hard. He woke up and he was like, man, what the fuck is going on? He was just like, I'm sitting there like, if these little ventilator things come out the sky, I'm going to just die. And I started praying to God. Oh, the guy that didn't believe in God why are you praying to God? Why are you coming to him now when you at your, <laughs> when you think you're about to die? So I pray to God, man. It's probably one of the best. I was probably sounding like T.D. Jakes in my head. So after that, plane had stopped shaking and we made it on to D.C. And uh, that experience <laughs> was life changing. That's when I was like, okay, I do understand it's a higher power. Then God, I start asking, like I didn't, I had left the faith, so I didn't really fear God like that. And then I would say like ridiculous things to God. God would be like, oh, okay, you really want to know? Cool, let me show you. And then he starts showing me things that I was asking to see. And the thing about the truth is, Sometimes you just don't want to know because when you see the truth, you can't deny it. So, after I found God, then I say, God, why are these black people, these African Americans, why are they treated like this? What did they do to deserve all of that? And then, God sent me an answer. He said, because they went away from me. They ain't even that Like, they went away. Like, church became some slave shit. Mark my word. Check me. Check me. It became more about the religion and less about Jesus. So your moms took you to a church that was less about the, the word of Jesus and it was more about the way that the pastor delivered it. Oh, pastor, pastor. And your mama took care of the pastor. And everybody looked after the pastor. And you in your mind equated the pastor to Jesus. So when the pastor failed you or the congregation failed you, you said Jesus did it. That kind of sound like I'm kind of moving in the right direction. Cool. Follow me now. Follow me now. So. Back to that question that I asked. I kept asking, why are these people treating my people this way? And God said, because they went up. He said, because they went away from me. Check me out. Like, it was kids that got molested. And instead of blaming the motherfucker that molested them, if they remembered, a lot of people don't remember that they got molested. Um, but they didn't blame the, the molester. They first blamed, they went to the person that they saw as God themselves. 
They went to God themselves, which was their mom or dad. And if the mom or dad said, nope, I don't want to hear nothing about that molestation shit. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Mm -mm. Make me look like a bad parent. So they go to Jesus and they too young to understand what this world looked like. They too young to understand that certain things ain't going to happen your way. Sometimes your questions ain't going to be answered in, in right after the TV episode. Sometimes you're going to get your answer 20, 30 years from now. But ain't nobody got no patience. Nobody's like ready to grow up that fast. So like we asked God these things. And when he said they went away from me. And I said, who are you? Because I'm talking to God. I'm have, I got a real relationship with God. And I said, well, who are you? And I'm talking about every time. It was Jesus. It, it went right, right to Jesus. Like I would be at a stop sign and a, a thing would pop up and it would be like Jesus in your face. And I was like, I'm rejecting all that shit. I don't have none of that. Mm -mm. Nope. Keep asking. Well, who are you, God? Who are you? And Jesus keep on. And so. I. Like like for this point, I had totally like got rid of the idea of Jesus. So I said, okay, well, Islam and Judaism at least said he was around. They at least said he was around. So he had to be real. Seventh prophet, seventh and last prophet. They just believed that he was a prophet. They didn't believe that he rose up. Now was a reason. Now I can't. I, 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 let me double back to that question. Back in the back in the game, I said, "Well, Jesus or God, why are my people around the world? Because I've traveled the world, and every time I went somewhere poor, all the black people were there. And so I said, why are my people around the world being treated like this?' And he said, "Because they went, they went away from me." And so I'm in Panama and we riding around, um, you know, sightseeing, whatever. And we going around these hills because they got a lot of hills. And I see this guy and I think he got like a purple robe on or something like this. And, and he like dragging this big ass wooden cross. Black guy, black, black Panamanian. He's dragging his cross. And I asked the driver, I say, what's that? I think he says like the journey of Christ, the, like the journey of black Christ, some, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. Don't 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 quote me on that. But it's like it was the march of Jesus, like they carried his cross, like the march of Jesus. And I was like, huh. Then I kept seeing a lot of black Jesus uh, pop up. In some of these churches. In South America, and I seen all these black people. Then I went to Brazil and Brazil had like the dopest history because it was so many, like Brazil got most of the Africans. And so, man, they were telling me all these stories about these brilliant people that came over as slaves. And then I kept saying, God, why are these people treated like this? He said, because they went away from me. And then I was reading this book. And the book is about Jesus, but Jesus being in South America. And then I'm looking at all these stories and I've done my black history research for people who don't know, um, travel around the world to see the things that I was reading about. So that's why I be talking about passports and people thought that I was being elitist, but a passport costs 99 crispy $1 bills and you, it can use, you can use it as a tool to get over there and see these things that you talk and read about. So back to, Jesus saying they done went away from me. Um, I was reading about these African stories about how these Africans had made it over to South America before uh, Columbus and his people and um, Spanish people showed up, conquistadors, and they taught everybody to speak Spanish and shit and had sex with the women and blended in. These Africans had showed up and they had all of these things. 
And then the thing is, God going to shake the world up so they can find out who he is. And they kept finding these big black figured ass statues in South America. And then I will always remember my friends, some of my friends from South Africa, they had black grandmothers and black, black great great grandmothers and great great grandfathers were black. But they forgot the history too because it was a big system. Big system that said, let's wipe all this black shit up off the face of the earth so we can look like God. So, still asking God, like, show me your face. Show me your face. And as I read this book about Jesus and all of these, uh, these things in this Bible possibly being happening in South America, I just keep reading and I say, man, I don't know, man, these people, I don't know. The story of Jesus might have traveled. But the thing about it is, the story of Jesus always exists. You know why it exists? Because it exists through the people. It exists through the Holy Spirit. See, this is ain't. This is not. When you see Jesus, Jesus is in in people that believe. And so the people of Jesus rise up and say, "We're not gonna take that bullshit no more." It happens in every civilization, and then things change. The spirit of these deities that pop up and they wake up in these certain regions of the world. These people, like I, I believe uh, Fair, Minister Louis Farrakhan explained it, um, that God one day woke up people around the world. People that could talk to God. And as I went around the world and I saw these other faiths, I can't shit on another person's faith because you woke up in a piece of the world that I wasn't at and you were taught something that I wasn't taught. Do I know if it's the truth or not? We don't know. But I know whatever brings you closer to God and can bring you me closer to an understanding of understanding how your God work. I don't dismiss someone's total religion because I believe something different. I don't believe my I believe my God is great. I believe my God is great, but you believe too. And so as I traveled the world, it helped me understand religion. Okay, well, I can still communicate with somebody from a different religion. I can seek to understand. And then if it's not something I agree with, then I don't have to agree. And if I do agree with it, well, fine, that works for you. Whatever brought you closer to God, fine. But then let's double back uh, to that question. Why are these people treated like this? God, why? Jesus, why are my people treated like this? And then I became a business owner. And then I got screwed over by my family. Like, I, it was some family members that like super fucked me over. Man, if I told y'all these stories, y'all would not believe this shit. Or what some of my family members have done to me. But that's what that was God showing me. Your people fucked up too. That's probably why they went away from me. But we couldn't blame our parents. <laughs> but the thing is, you went away from him because you didn't you had your parents' connection to him. You didn't have your your direct connection, it was no, you ain't had no line that went there. You had to go through somebody. You went through your pastor, your mama and them, your daddy and them, your uncle and them. They told you everything about Jesus. And they didn't even know Jesus because they didn't love themselves. Some of them was beaten, abused, and they ain't love themselves the right way. So they couldn't teach Jesus to you the right way. It ain't their fault. They was living this experience just like we are. They was in a oppressed place just like we were. It's cool. But that don't mean that they always right. And we are in a place in time. And I'm going to tell you why this world is the way that it is. Because we believe that we are God. It's like black people believe that they're God. Let me tell you how. We are above correction. Go correct somebody online. Go correct. Oh, I, like 
go correct a black person. You can't correct. Like I've been in relationships where I could not say anything to a woman. I could not say anything. I can't say nothing to you because you are were above correction. And guess what? They said some things to me and I wasn't above correction. That was me and my God. Well, you can't correct me. I'm God. God's the only person that's perfect. We start thinking that we were perfect because we start thinking that we was God. And now God's showing you, you're not really God. You're not above correction either. You're not perfect either. But you're going to be all right. If you change it, you can change it tomorrow. So, back to what I'm saying. Like, okay, God, why are my people being treated like this? He said, because they went away from me. So he kept showing me my people. Drug addiction, sex addiction, um, ego addiction, 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 poverty, slavery, oppression. And these people continue to blame Jesus when they could have just stood up and said, we don't fucking agree. Not just black people. Everybody has to get up at one time and say, we don't fucking agree. And then things change. You think I'm bullshitting? Look at what Occupy Wild Street did for jobs. When people got pitchforks, politicians get scared. Even the super rich get scared because they know the poor will eat the rich if the, if the poor get hungry enough. So what I'm saying is use that Jesus spirit. To tell these motherfuckers that we do not agree with the way that they have been treating us. But you got to get closer to God. You got to stop thinking that you God. You got to stop thinking that you know everything. You can go. And we got on to this thing too where you can go on Google and find out the answers real quick. So we became God. <laughs> motherfuckers became so godly. Like, nigga, that ain't true. Nigga, I can go on. <laughs> Nigga, I can Google your whole life. Nigga, I know something bad about you. Nigga, I don't have to respect you. Nigga, get out of here. God showed me my people this year, man. These last two years, God showed me my people. And then he gave you this Bible to show you how to deal with your people and these other people. And we ran away from God because our godly figures, our mom, dad, pastor, and people that we had that were supposed to protect us, they hurt us. So we ran away from Jesus. Y'all gonna make it back, man. I love y'all, man. God told me to give y'all a message on his day. On his day. On resurrection day. And I hope you receive it. And I hope them curse words didn't deter you from the true message. Because the true message is, a lot of y'all think y'all perfect. And you're not. And when you say, that's okay. You'll be able to grow from it. But as long as you think you're perfect, you out of there. You're going to stand in your house with your cultic life and you're going to eat of yourself. Eat with yourself and of yourself. Only together people can survive. And if you're not together, you're not going to survive. So... Jesus told me to give you this message today on Resurrection Day. 